All right, let me take you through uh, a few little tips here that you might want to employ uh, in your live setup. And some of the things um, you might not be thinking about. So I want to kind of get you thinking of some different type of things. For instance, a backdrop. It is often not very much talked about, but it's so important. What we use is, this is basically the same material that they make, you know, like moving blankets out of. And we had these made for us, so we had a good guy who sewed them. And it was only about 200 bucks, but why they're so important is, is they take a lot of the sound and they uh, kind of disperse it more evenly. A lot of times when we play in clubs and bars, you're going to be playing against like a glass wall or some sharp surface and that could be spell big trouble for the sound man because you're going to have sound waves bashing off of that very quickly and not being able to control it. So having a backdrop, you'll be amazed how much it helps. It's a nice thick padded material and plus it looks kind of cool to have something dark that you're playing against. You can hang your banner and this instance is our, my band Leo Rising. And if you have one made, you want to have them sew a pocket in the top to run a pole so you can hang it because in a lot of places you're not going to be able to nail it to the wall or do any damage so what we do is we run a pole and it's a system of three foot poles along the top it has a pocket sewn in and then you have the stands on the ends now these stands come apart you can set them up like tripods or in this instance we have them because we don't have enough room we just have them up against the wall tight so the backdrop makes a big, huge difference, especially if you're playing in places with a lot of glass, which if you're playing in bars and small, medium clubs, you're going to have glass all around you and you want to cover it up. Um, in this instance, we have two uh, six-foot panels, so it gives us 12 feet. And if we need more, if we have another side of glass, we'll get, we bring more in. So get yourself a backdrop. It really will improve the overall sound of everything. All right. As you saw in our rehearsal room, we have we basically use for most of our live performances. We have our tower consisting of our 18-inch subwoofers uh, for all the lows that we run through, and then we have our mains, our 15-inch mains with the horn. Now these are JBLs. I really like the JBL line of speakers. I think they're of the best out there. And um, these are wood cabinets. And remember, I talked about that because a lot of times with PA systems, speakers, it's all about resonance. And you, with wood, it resonates so much better and more clear than like a lot of times you'll see PA speakers encased in ABS plastic. And if you listen to the ABS plastic versus the wood, the wood usually always sounds better. I think so anyway. So that's a choice you want to consider when choosing your speakers. Um, the, the resonance of the wood. It's kind of like an acoustic guitar. Remember I always talk about the wood and the resonance of the wood of the acoustic. The sound going in there and resonating and bouncing around. Wood resonates really well. Well, um, if you can, it's always a good idea to separate your sounds. And I talked about this before, meaning we run all the lows through the 18s, through the subwoofers. So through here we have the kick drum, we have the uh, bass guitar, and some of the guitar frequencies are running through the lower ones anyway, through the subs. And the vocals, the guitar, when you're micing everything is coming out the main, okay? Um, it's always nice to separate your sound because you'll get clearer sound plus when you separate it You're not running everything through the mains so you don't have to drive your mains as hard So it actually makes your whole system sound better clearer and it saves a lot of wear and tear now these we talked about active speakers versus passive these are active they have amps built right into them Here's the amp right here. And the other thing I like about these new JBLs is this is the Crown amplifier built right into the speaker. So we don't need a separate amp at the, at the, at the mixer. The amp is basically right here. Here's your power. So you have to be able to have the, uh, uh, run an extension or have a power outlet where you can go through. Here's our XLR in to the speaker. Um, and then we have a level controls and EQ boosts and whatnot. Um, Really like the Crown amps. They do. They're just they're just awesome. And the JBLs you can't go wrong. This is the PRX 500. Okay. These light up when they're on, which is cool too. Now the subwoofer system that we use, the 
subwoofer system that we use, the 18 inch speaker, again, these are powered. Then you can get these non powered, but then you're going to have to have a separate amp, right? Having it all in one is nice. It's a little heavier, but it, it just, uh, we like the portability of it and not having a separate amp. So we have a separate power amp driving this, separate power amp built in driving our mains. The thing that you have to remember is that it takes a lot more signal or input to drive an 18 inch speaker and get that moving than a 15 inch speaker and get that moving and pushing air. The reason that's important is coming off your main board, you cannot run the same signal, the same amount of, of, of output to both pieces because this will be way louder than this and you're going to end up putting more stress on your mains. You need a separate mix. So you always want to have a separate mix for your subs than you do for your main, so you control the levels to each. And obviously, if you're playing a lot of small venues where you do a lot of coffee house, you're not gonna bring your big subs. This is more for the medium-sized clubs where you really wanna separate the lows and get that bass, those lows pumping, and really get the crowd feeling it. So much difference, and you'll, you'll your whole system will sound so much clearer and have more power when you separate like this, or at least it'll seem that way, it'll sound a lot better. Um, um, and again, Consider the JBLs, they do a great job. I talk about the monitors, the stage monitors for a moment, okay? We have three monitors set up in front and a couple things you'll notice right off the bat is as to save space on the small stages, try to prop them up on milk crates or on the steps instead of having the monitor on the actual stage because that will save you room and save you stage room so you'll be able to move around, especially on small stages, so try to get everything off the stage. The other thing is, is if you notice, the vocal mics, the microphones, have to be behind the speakers. Our speakers are out front, okay? Your vocal mics, especially when your speakers are in tight, the vocal mics have to be behind your mains because otherwise the mic or phone, you're going to get feedback where the speakers are going to feed back through the mains. So you see here, vocal mic. The towers are out front. You don't want to have this vocal, you don't want to have the speakers back here because then you're going to get feedback between the mic and the speaker. Be different if we can get these speakers way to the sides, but here we're in tight because the space constraints. So have your um, speakers out front, your mics behind it. So on stage, basically what we're hearing is you don't hear any of the main mix. What we're hearing is just the amplifiers and what's coming through the monitors. That's why your monitors are so important because, uh, and in most instances, we mainly just run the vocals through the monitors, except for our drummer. Our drummer has a separate monitor, which we run kick through and his snare, so we'll give him a separate mix so he can hear what he needs to hear. But the big thing is with your monitors, you wanna make sure they're loud enough because in many instances, another tip is if the singer, your vocalist, cannot hear themselves, they're gonna scream louder and it's gonna, it's gonna cause them to stress out their voice a lot faster. Make sure your monitors are loud enough so your singer is comfortable, can hear them. Also, if you're singing backgrounds, you wanna be able to hear yourself and make sure you're in key on pitch. So have a good mix. Now we have all these run off a separate EQ also just to help with feedback and also to help give each person exactly what they want to hear, okay? You could have active and passive on your monitors too. Again, we use JBLs, these are 12s with a horn, and uh, uh, they do a really good job. They're very clear and tight, and they sound great. Um, so important to get a good monitor mix, because remember, when you're on stage, you're, if your speakers are up front, you're not going to hear what's coming through. We leave that to our sound guys, and those are the guys that are adjusting the mix. You're hearing monitor mix, and you're hearing the amplifiers, and you want to keep your stage volume low as possible. You want to have it high enough so there's energy, and you can feel it, and the crowd's going, but you don't want your stage volume too high, because we have the guitar mic, the bass mic, and if it's too loud, it's going to negate coming out of the PA. So you want to have it loud enough for energy, but not too loud, because you want the sound guys controlling the sound from your towers, from your mains, from your subs, okay? That's very, very important. A lot of times the stage volume is way too loud, and then your sound guys, they don't have control over the sound. That's why.